We're back in Elko County this week, people, back in the northeast corner of Nevada with a new property really unlike anything we've listed before. This is a large, sprawling property in a very rural setting. Of course, what that means is you've got no neighbors, a lot of privacy, picturesque, wide-open space, mountainous backdrop, and big blue skies as far as the eye can see. Perfect for a home, perfect for a ranch, and perfect for the type of buyer, we'll say, makes their own way in life. That describes you. Stay tuned to learn more after the intro. Alright people, as noted, we're back up here in the northeast portion of Nevada in the county of Elko. Of course, Elko is a massive county, occupies a lot of land, so it's important to differentiate exactly what part of the county we're in. Today with the subject property, we're over here in the easternmost portion of the county in a region called the Gamble District. Now, Gamble District is a bit sprawling, it is a bit large, it is a bit difficult to define. I will, however, try to ballpark it and tell you that... It occupies most all this region just south of Nevada State Road 233, just north of Interstate 80, and just west of the Utah County line. Of course, there is a good portion of it that bleeds north of the 233 and just north of Interstate 80, but realistically, it's occupying pretty much all of the eastern part of the county. The subject property sits in close proximity to the small blink-and-you'll-miss-a town of Montello. Of course, in Montello, you've got a post office, a gas station, a convenience store, and little else. Fortunately, guys, about 30 minutes south of the property, you've got the town of West Wendover, Nevada, and the sister town of Wendover, Utah. These, of course, would be the more logical place for groceries, supplies, medical services, and general recreation. West Wendover, it should be noted, is home to a number of casinos, bars, and restaurants, and Wendover boasts a few notable sites, including the Bonneville Salt Flats, as well as the historic Wendover Airfield used by the U.S. military during World War II. Now, while the county of Elko is, of course, home to the town of Elko, it should be noted that due to its size, there's still a considerable distance between the subject property and the county seat, roughly about an hour and a half here along Interstate 80. And while this may be too far for casual daily trips, it should be noted that even greater resources, of course, will be found there. In fact, boasting a population of roughly about 20,000, Elko is home to a number of big box stores, Walmart and Home Depot, as well as fast food restaurants, bars, and casinos. In addition, the town offers major medical services in its northeastern Nevada regional hospital, as well as air travel through its Elko regional airport. Of course, plenty of schools, parks, and churches can also be found in this quaint western community. With all that said, people, let's get back to talking about the Gamble District. So, the Gamble District is not the name of a formal subdivision, but rather is named for the original rancher who subdivided and sold off the seemingly thousands of acres that comprise this area of Northeast Nevada. Now, because of this, this region, unlike a lot of the properties that we list, does not have the same structure that a formal subdivision might. There are no covenants, there are no restrictions, no HOA, no annual dues, and no time limits on building. Now, despite lacking the formal structure of a subdivision, keep in mind the property is still part of Elko County and is thus subject to county zoning ordinance. This property is zoned R1, or single-family residential, which means it's designed, quote, to provide and preserve low-density residential living areas reserved predominantly for the development of single-family dwellings. And that means that while this property may be ideal for a ranch, or a farm, or a one- or two-story house, shipping container home, or a mobile home with a permanent foundation, it could not be used for RV living or camping. Theoretically, that's per the zoning ordinance, okay? Mind you guys, you're going to see a lot of exceptions to the zoning ordinance if you look at the home sites that are developed in regions like this. You'll find a lot of people who are using RVs. They do seem to be camping for long periods of time. I'm simply relaying to you what the zoning ordinance says. To learn more about the R1 zoning designation, if you just come up here on the website and click on this link right here, it'll bring up this PDF in a separate window where you can read more about that and just get a better sense of exactly how the county outlines what the land can and cannot be used for. Of course, as always, guys, if you have further questions about this, we recommend reaching out to Elko County Planning and Zoning directly. Okay, people, with all that said, the subject property is an 80-acre parcel, 8-0, 80 acres, located just up here north-northwest of Nevada State Road 233 in the shadows of Murdoch Mountain, which, of course, we've got some photos of that we will show you in a bit. One thing I want to start by pointing out here, guys, is that these 80 acres are not well-defined on the map, 
We, of course, have a plat map in the photo gallery to give you a sense of exactly what the general shape of this property is, as well as exactly how much larger it is than all the properties that sit around it, all of the neighboring properties. But another thing that I want to talk about is that while Nevada State Road 233 is in relatively close proximity of the property, this is not one of these pieces of land that is very easy to access as far as just kind of look at a map and easily figure it out. This is not necessarily intuitive. It's not something that your GPS is probably going to be very helpful with. This is something that if you do decide to go out and scout the property, you're going to want to study the map in advance. So this is something I just want to spend a little bit of time on here at the outset. If you zoom in here on the 233, which is also called Montello Road, you will notice that down here there's an access point called Wild W Road. This is the access point that you want to get to head out to the subject parcel. And more specifically, you want to cross these train tracks down here. That is going to be your best way out to the property. This is the way that our photographer took out to the subject parcel. And of course, we've got some photos in the gallery of exactly what this Wild W Road looks like. There are power lines out here, but of course, this is nowhere close to the subject parcel. Additionally, as you look at this, you get a good sense of the fact that these are not the world's most well-maintained roads. You're going to want to take a larger truck or off-road capable vehicle out there with you. And I would also add a spare tire is probably not a bad idea. Anyway, as we go through the gallery, you can see these are what the train tracks look like that you're going to want to cross over to head out to the subject parcel. Now, guys, this is something that you're going to want to study a little bit more on your own. But when you cross these train tracks, you're still on this wild W road. It, it pretty much snakes all throughout the region. Point being, you're taking this going up this way, going basically north-northwest on this road for a little while until you head out to uh, a little bit past here. Now, I will point out to you guys, you can see there's a number of roads heading north-south in this region. Which is the best to take out to the property? That's the kind of thing that you learn over time. That being said, this one right here, which you can kind of identify, it's got a little landmark, it's got kind of a, uh, a trailer or mobile home out here, somebody living in this region. This seems to be one of the best north-south access points. And as I understand it from my photographer, this was the road that he ultimately took to get out to the subject property. If we right-click and measure distance from here down to the train tracks, you will see it is roughly a little bit under four miles. So that's four miles of some pretty, you know, tough dirt road that you're going to be taking out to that region, okay? Anyway, going back to the photo gallery, guys, it bears mentioning that there are some home sites out here. Some of them have been abandoned. Some of them are developed. Whatever the case, this is a very, very private piece of land out here. Of course, as you can see, you've got some really great views of the surrounding mountains of just the sort of beautiful picturesque region that surrounds this. Of course, it goes without saying that this is not a property that has easy access to any sort of utilities. There is no power out here, no power lines to the subject property. This is what we would call a solar-friendly piece of land. So it should be noted, guys, despite its rural setting, there are a surprising number of signs like this in the region advertising high-speed internet service available through HughesNet. Additionally, there is a rather large cell tower that is servicing this region and that our photographer claimed provided some excellent cell service while he was out at the subject property. So you do at least have these two things going for you, if not utilities directly at the property or really anywhere close. That's something to keep in mind as you have plans to develop the property, notions about power, about how to get it, about how to power the property, of course, things you're going to want to think of in advance. And of course, if you want to reach out to Nevada Power in advance or HughesNet, that's always recommended, particularly in advance of a purchase of this size. One thing I do want to point out here in the gallery, guys, is that these are some of your neighbors. We've got a lot of pronghorn antelope in this region, in this part of Nevada, and our photographers added a bunch of properties out here, and he photographed these at uh, a couple different places. We, of course, are using these photos in a bunch of different galleries, just as an example of the fact that these animals are sort of ubiquitous in this region, and you will see them on the property and within the surrounding area. Of course, people should be noted that this is a very remote property. This is very secluded. And while I noted earlier that the zoning in this region is for a single family residential, as you can see here, there's nobody close to this property. There will probably not be anybody close for years to come. And so if this is a property you want to use for recreational purposes, while it is not, you know, laid out in the zoning ordinance, my guess is that you probably can get away with it, particularly being as far as you are from Elko proper. So maybe this is a property you want to develop in the future, but it's something you do want to use recreationally or for camping or for RVing for the next few years. My guess is you're not going to have any problems doing that.
With all that said, people, if you would like to purchase this property, you'll be glad to know that we closed under through WFG National Title Insurance Company, which not only means that we receive title insurance with the property, but that we will be conveying it to you with clear and marketable title. To initiate this process, just come up here to the top of the page and click this Buy Now button, which will take you to this secure checkout where we ask for a non-refundable people, let me say it again, non-refundable $500 earnest money deposit. Now, to be clear, guys, this is not a property that has any financing offered. This is not a property where we're doing monthly payments. This is a property where we expect you to have the entire cash price. So if you do not have the entire cash price, you should not initiate this transaction. For those of you who do, however, here's the way it works. Come down here, give us the name for the deed, name for the contract, your mailing address, then at the bottom of the page, agree to the terms of service, click next, and on the very next page, you can enter credit or debit card information to place the $500 deposit. Now, to be clear, guys, this is an expensive property. Really, anything north of $10,000, we encourage our buyers to close through a title company on. Of course, you don't have to do that. Nobody's got a gun to your head. It's up to you. But when you're spending this kind of money, we recommend getting title insurance. And of course, one of the major benefits here for you, the buyer, is that with a title company, you've got a third-party intermediary who is not only handling the conveyance of the property, but also the disbursement of funds, meaning we cannot touch your money until such a time as the property has been deeded into your name. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how that whole process works, you'll be glad to know that on the listing page, we've got this helpful notes about purchasing, which goes into a little more detail here. But more helpfully, it links you to some pages on the website, which will go into even greater detail about this process. The first page is called How It Works Buying From Us. And if you go here, you can see exactly how this process plays out. Step one, you place that deposit. Step two, we're going to draft a contract. You sign it, we sign it. And step three, the title company will do the rest, albeit slowly and over the period of about a month. And in case you're at all skeptical about placing money before seeing the contract you'll be asked to sign, you'll be glad to know we have a copy of our standard sale purchase agreement right here. You click that and read through a generic version of what that contract looks like. It's a pretty easy contract, one page, one page for signatures. If you got a lawyer in the family, have them give it a look-see, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Additionally, guys, if you haven't been through the title escrow process before, you're probably going to have a lot of questions about it. You'll be glad to know we have a page on our website entitled Title Escrow Frequently Asked Questions page. So if you click on that, it'll take you to this page where pretty much every conceivable question we have ever gotten from a buyer or will ever get from a buyer is answered here. Questions about benefits, questions about potential drawbacks, timeline, schedule, logistics, so on and so forth. So we encourage you, give that a read. In conclusion, guys, glad to finally be listing property like this on the website. We've been trying for some time to get sprawling acreage like this, particularly in areas with fewer restrictions than we normally find in a lot of the more formal subdivisions that we list in. Of course, as noted earlier, this property's got zoning, but it's in Elko County, which means you're in the Wild West, which means you're going to be able to do a lot of things that you can't do elsewhere. And of course, in doing that, you've got these great sort of sprawling landscapes off in the distance here. You've got the beautiful mountains, the breathtaking scenery, these gorgeous blue skies, and these magnificent sunsets. So I really like these. Really glad to have them up on the website. Hope you agree, and thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.